Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Silver Screen Dudes. My name is Nico Luro, and today I am joined by the star, the lead actress of Escape, the review for which is out on the channel right now. Highly recommended. Um, I'm joined by Sarah Alexandra Mark. Sarah, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? I am very well, thank you. Thanks for having me, Nico. Glad to be here. It's absolutely my pleasure. As I said, I absolutely loved Escape and I want to ask you, actually, what was it that originally drew you to, to, to this role? Oh, well, it was Howard J. Ford, <laughs> the man himself. He drew me to this film. Just the way that he would tell the storyline and, you know, the character that he had in mind for me. He's just so expressive and magical, the way he um, speaks about movies, you know, he's, he's, his passion, and you can really see that. And I just knew instantly I wanted to work with Howard. And mm. it, it actually didn't matter what I was working with Howard on, but it just so happened to be that he had an amazing, epic idea for Escape and for my character. So it was a no-brainer for me. It, epic's actually quite a good word, which so, some people who have seen this might think, huh, epic? But I'd actually say think about this because a movie really works for me personally when you're almost getting too invested in it. Like you see yeah. some of the some of the girls in it sort of make bad decisions. And I found myself actually sort of screaming at the screen sometimes. Like, Don't do that. <laughs> and it really does get its claws in on you. Um it's this genre type of movie is something I want to talk to you about now. So female roles in these movies traditionally have been quite minimalist. It's either sexualized or just there for the gore. The fact that your role set you apart from this and aimed to humanize you with a tragic backstory. How proud of you of what you've contributed now to the genre and how do you see it moving forward with regards to women's roles in the genre? Oh, I'm super proud. And Howard did so well developing all of our characters, the guys and the girls, both, you know, mm. and um, he just set us all up so well, and especially my character background. And also the fact that the girls really use their minds to try and fight yeah. for survival. You know, they're in real vulnerable situations in, in depths of despair, but they use that to actually find mm. strength. So I just hope that, you know, there's more roles in the future that can be so div diverse like this for myself. I think there will be. Yeah, 100. Th there hope. must be, there must be. It's, listen, I think this, this is one of the many movies I've seen recently where they're kind of breaking the mold of what's expected, especially of the women in these roles, you know? Um, yeah. And it's great to see. And I have to say, it, you really did bring uh, some gravitas to this role. Like there were, listen, as a father to a, to a little girl, this terrified me, this movie. I was like, yeah, this, oh, yeah. this isn't I so far removed from reality. This can happen. And so yeah. I think to any father of a girl out there or a husband, a sister, whatever, this, this will yeah. speak to you because this can happen. It's terrifying. Of course. It, it makes you think, doesn't it? And you do hope that yeah. young girls watching can learn from it, you know, to just be a little bit more mindful when you are on your own or with a group of girls, or if you go on holiday, just to be aware. Mm -hmm. Especially of handsome strangers, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> don't um, be fooled. So I, I, no, don't be fooled <laughs> by the good looks and the charm. Just don't. Um, now, I thought you were great in this role. You, you showed a Thank really you. nice balance of like vulnerability and fear, but also some steely resolve when it mattered. Um, how did you prefer, how did you prepare, sorry, to convey that range of emotions? Really, I just try to stay present in the moment. That is one of my main go-tos is to just be there and to really be switched on and take in my surroundings and take in my co-stars and their characters that they are also creating. And, mm -hmm. you know, because it's also teamwork too, isn't it? Bouncing off of your co-stars who you're in the scene with. And it's just, you know, looking around, thinking, 
about the situation my character is in. I always try to think about what would Sarah do? What would I do if I was in this situation? And then I try to bring that also into my character and think about what my character would do. And really, especially in this film, when you start thinking about the situation your character is in, and then you think about, oh, mm. Sarah in that situation, it is really scary. And, yeah. you know, it's, you don't really need much more than that to get you in that mindset and to get you into the right emotions and feelings. It, it sort of all just comes forth quite organically. Mm. Yeah. So w what is your creative process for getting into that organic rhythm? How would you how, can, can you talk me through it? Like, because some yeah. of these scenes are really brutal, what they put you through. And it's like so you've clearly got to, you know, the scene where you're at the pool, for instance, just relaxing versus when you're locked in the prison cell. I mean, it's yeah. two different, completely different mindsets. So, you know, pull the curtain back for me. How does Sarah prepare on the day of X, Y and Z scene? How do you really zone in on it? obviously like you say some scenes are so far from each other and so opposite and, mm. and obviously the ones where you're having fun and you're relaxing at the beach and, or by the pool or the sea with your friend they're, they're like quite easy you know you're just in the moment yeah. have fun because I'm actually there on the beach sunbathing so <laughs> just go with it and enjoy it but first and foremost I always always make sure that I know my lines through and through mm. because if you've got that mastered, that is one thing that you can let go and that you don't need to think about. So I always make sure I know my lines and that I could recite them while dancing, you know, doing something else physical. Nice. So then I can drop them and I'm also there ready for, you know, any changes that need to come from the director. And then I'll do some character research, if need be, dependent on the character that I am portraying. Mm. And again, it's, it is also a matter of what I said before. I just make sure I'm so present in the moment. I just think uh, you, you have to be. You have to be just really yeah. switched on and aware. And it does, the rest does follow, you know. You're in your makeup and you're in your costume and you're in the setting and everything all starts to come together which all builds your character in these heightened moments. Um, and also really it's just Howard and his, you know, his script and his storylines that make that quite an easy exercise to bring forth and bring your character to life. And his direction as well, the way he approaches you and for, you know, feedback and how to try this or to try that. He's just such a joy to work with. So everything is its really quite a breeze on a Howard J. Ford nice. film set. Well, so you talk about the writing. That's actually something I'd like to touch on here because I don't think this is so much a negative. I think it just kind of goes hand in hand with the genre. It, it's, it's So the casting process about, you know, when they gave you the script, when you saw it, the narrative of this film, you know, ladies being kidnapped and escaping and essentially giving the guy who did this some just desserts the kidnappers narratively made a massive point about quote the girls need to have great asses right yes so and some of the camera work you know was clearly there to emphasize that i mean there, there was some yes. gratuitous butt shots how, how do you make sure when you're dealing with something like that that it's kind of done tastefully and that boundaries are, resp are respected for roles like this, which are quite sexualized. I think um, it's really just who you're working with. And it's a gut yeah. feeling if you know things are being handled correctly or if they're yeah. going beyond that. And it's just a gut feeling. You'll feel off about it. So you just have to go with your intuition and, you know, take the director or producer aside and, and just voice your feelings and opinions and say, oh, I, you know, it's always good to speak up and to say how you're feeling and if things are a little off. Because they could also be, you know, it's just a miscommunication. So, mm -hmm. but uh, really on this set, it was all very easy. Everything was handled with care. There was, uh, yeah, there was really no no issues with, with that front and... You know, I think we were all only in bikinis, really. 
Yeah. I'm very happy to wear a bikini on the beach, sunbathe, you know, by the pool. Uh, sure. But yeah, it was it was all it was all actually okay. Yeah, and don't get me wrong. I never thought it was done untastefully. Yes. But I, it, it, yeah. as someone who kind of reviews films, that there, there, there's. And, you know, in a post Me Too world, you are you become as a man a lot more conscious of our people being yes. treated. Right. And not just yeah. that, but what would the mindset of a woman be taking on a role like this? Which is why I just wanted to get your take on it. I certainly don't think there was anything done untastefully. It was all like, no, of course yeah, this, not. yeah, this is what the script demands. It makes sense. But I think you're right. I think you do as a woman, you do need to have, you know, your wits about you and be aware of how you mm. are being treated and, and to make sure that things are being handled with care because sometimes there are other scenes, you know, that are a little more, more intimate in certain ways. So, you know, you just have to uh, go with your gut and speak up, always yeah. speak up. Yeah, good advice to all the young aspiring actresses out there. Are we allowed to say that? Actors, actresses? I think we're allowed to say that still. Um, yeah. So a, a lot of the time, creatives and actors, actresses talk about how real people have influenced the characters that appear in their work or influenced their performance. And you've, as I said, we're going to touch on this in a moment. You had were lucky to have one of the best backstories that influenced your character's decision making in the movie. Who, if yeah. any, were the inspirations for you embodying Carla? Uh, really, I didn't have anyone that I really touched base with or thought of when embodying Carla, but I did have real people that I did use here and there when I needed within certain scenes. So mm -hmm. not so much to do with Carla's character, but it's really about certain scenes that she was put in where she was remembering the past with her sister and I used time to reflect actually about my mum and I actually remember sitting there looking up at the top of the sand dune ahead of me in my eye line when I was saying that monologue with Sophie uh, her character Lucy and I just pictured mm. my mum and sitting there watching me and so I drew on that for that feeling that uh, I wanted nice. to portray about the loss of her sister. That's really lovely. I, I have to say, I, the only negative I could really find about Carla's past wasn't actually anything that I thought you were responsible for. I thought there was the, the edit. I don't know if I'd put it down to the editing or the script itself. Maybe you can tell me more about that. You you tease at the beginning of the movie when you're on the beach that, you know, you've clearly lost someone and it's left very ambiguous purposefully. The thing that frustrated me a bit about what you were working with was that I almost felt that the grand reveal of what happened to you was left too late. Okay. It, maybe it's a personal thing. I would have liked that to have come oh. earlier. When you originally re read the script, was that reveal when it, happened or did they rejig things in the editing suite from the final on the final product well <laughs> i'm not if sure if i that. can <laughs> if i can say but howard had the whole film from beginning to end in his mind mm. but there were scenes being written as we went along so it wasn't a fully fleshed out script so to speak from the, the, the get-go. So, I mean, mm. maybe there, there may have been, in Howard's mind, a time earlier on to reveal that, but it just ended up being as it is in the film, like you say. But I don't know. Okay, fair enough. I'll have to no, ask Howard. I completely Howie. understand. <laughs> I'll have, I'll, you'll have to put me in touch with him and I'll get him on and say Absolutely. Why? <laughs> <laughs> um, so what would, what would you say was the most challenging part of this production and how did you overcome it? 100% running in heels the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> I know that sounds so way... silly, but it was such a challenge, Nico, seriously. Because I was running in wedges. I think I was the only girl in heels. And I did not plan this. It was completely mm. accidental. 
because I did a little snippet of filming for the promo of Escape for Howard mm -hmm. in Cannes before principal okay. photography took place. And I didn't even know at this point that I was going to be cast in the movie. Mm. So I rocked up to this filming in what I thought would be a good idea, you know, the dress and the heels. So this right. was not thought out well. <laughs> if only I had known, I'd be running through uh, rocky terrain and sandy, you know, beaches and deserts. So that was the the hardest thing for me because it was crazy, uh, you know, terrain to run in and my ankles buckled so many times, but not once did I oh. fall to the floor. So I am very, nice. very proud. I always caught myself before I fell. Nice. Well, it looked like Cape Verde to me, but I couldn't quite make out where you guys were. What, what was the filming location? It's the Canary Islands. It was Canaries. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So beautiful what, what were, really beautiful. Yeah, we had lovely stunning. weather as well. I was going to say, like, there were some, some movies I've seen recently where you can tell that the weather was just not compliant. Like um, Charlotte Kirk's <laughs> movie, Duchess. I don't know if you've seen that recently, but like... I've yeah, seen the trailer, went, yes. Yeah, Duchess is really good. Charlotte Kirk's a friend of the channel now, but yeah, she's... Um, she was very open about the fact that they sort of went to Tenerife and the weather was just not compliant really? and they didn't have the budget oh. or time to refilm but no, i love shame, like mm, yeah yeah but like the color palette the desert feel i love what was done with escape but not a lot of actors and actresses i meet who have worked in the desert can you speak a little bit about some of the difficulties of working in the desert hmm i mean it's, it's actually quite hard to say what the difficulties were because for me it was a joy you know, to be uh, to <laughs> be in the desert and have the sun and the peace because it wasn't, as you can imagine, it wasn't flooding with people. Right. So it was just, uh, it was amazing. I, I remember I was just looking around at every time before we would start filming. We'd just arrive thinking, this is epic. This is absolutely That's unreal. Awesome. You know, I'm surrounded by sand dunes and beautiful scenery and amazing birds flying around. It was just, it was great. We only had That's one so day, really, where we struggled with weather and um, the island had a warning for a cyclone. Mm -hmm. So we just had one day where it was crazy winds and crazy rain. So that was sort of a write-off. We managed to get one little shot as we were driving to the next accommodation because the rain just stopped and we pulled over on the side of the road and Hal said, let's just quickly get this one shot here. Um, I don't know if you remember where I, I peek up on this little um, mount of dirt and I'm watching Lucy run towards the cave and she's being followed by the two baddies. Yeah, so yeah. that shot, we just filmed just on the way to the next accommodation location, just off the cuff because it stopped raining. So it wasn't a complete write-off that day. We did get one thing in the That's cool. Uh, do you know what? I, I actually love that answer because I was looking at this going, you know, those, especially considering you mentioned the running in the heels, right? It's like I was thinking, wow, these girls are having a rough time running through the desert, rough <laughs> terrain, heat blaring down on them, and you're just like, no, it was great. I think that's awesome. Oh, lovely. Uh, I love being warm. I, I don't like being cold. So it was the perfect setting for me. That's awesome. Um, let's talk about you and your like of movies then. So what are some of your favorite movies and also maybe some hidden gems you think that people need to see? Oh, gosh, I have a mix. So my like go-to favorite of all time is Dirty Dancing. Mm -hmm. It makes me super happy and it's nostalgic. So I, I'm totally in love with that film. I can watch it any time of the day. Um, and then a bit of a, a flip. I love Interstellar. I think it's such a mm. magical movie, Interstellar. Mm. Um, True Romance as well. It's another it's great one film. one of my favourite. Yeah, yeah. Mm, it's yeah. a really good film, isn't it? The storyline. Come on, man. Dennis Hopper, and, oh. Dennis Hopper and Walken on screen together. Come yeah. on. That's, yeah, it's so, so good. good. And the characters they create, they're just epic. I watch yeah. that and I just think, oh my God, I would love to play a character like hers. It's just like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's so cool. 
Yeah, and Patricia a gem. Arquette, I think, that's um, where she's with Gandolfini is is amazing. It's like, oh, she's got oh, some yeah. power to her, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah. Oh, she so does. Cool. Really? Yeah, she's uh, yeah. actually quite kick-ass, isn't she? Oh, massively. She's being beaten <laughs> yeah. up and she's still like, mm-mm, <laughs> you're not getting what you want I out just, of me. I love it. Yeah, and I love that scene where he comes back and he's eating the burger and yeah. he says that he basically like just killed the pimp. And you mm. think she's going to go crazy. And then she just says, this is the most romantic thing most anyone romantic. has ever done for me. I just <laughs> love it. It's so, so cool. good. <laughs> it's so good. I think it it's the best thing Tarantino's ever written, personally. I know he didn't direct it, but I think it's so sharp, that film. Yeah, I'm with you yeah. on that. True romance. I agree, actually. Good. I agree. Oh. It's an epic movie. And I, I watched um, the other day a little gem that I have been recommending to people. It's Apocalypto. It's an old movie of oh, Mel Gibson. It's so good. Great movie, it's isn't so it? so good. Do you know what? It's so funny you mention Apocalypto. Um, we were doing a big family walk around the South Downs yesterday, and my wife's like a, a Mayan Aztec nut. She loves all that stuff. She can actually read it, believe it or not. She can understand oh, the symbols. Wow. It's quite, that is impressive. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. And she was just talking about it, and I said, have you seen Apocalypto? And so we, literally just yesterday we were talking about this and she's like, no, no, they misportrayed the Mayans. It was over violent. I'm like, yeah, but it's a damn good movie. It's good. <laughs> like, it's an epically it's good. I do good agree movie. with I do agree with your wife, though. It is really violent. And I did find that mm. tough to watch. At some points I was closing my eyes. But the storyline and the love, you know, between mm -hmm. the two characters, it's just oh, it's so great. Such a good oh, it's movie. It's awesome. Really it's is. yeah, it's crazy it. how few people have seen that one, huh? It's nuts because yeah. it's it's people sort of saw Passion of the Christ and were really mm -hmm. put off by Mel Gibson, and this then followed it, and people are like, no, no, it's a Mel Gibson movie, I don't want to touch it. And I was like, no, yeah. no, you must. <laughs> it's you should, epic. Yes, you should. Yeah, highly yeah. recommend it. I think it's a wonderful movie. Really great storyline. I and actually agree acting. with you. I think great acting great acting and i actually agree with you i think you could almost classify that as a hidden gem now it's it's what 2024 yeah, yeah it's it's so it's 20 years it old is. now isn't it so yeah yeah crazy all right well yep. this has been awesome sarah thank you can we get a little bit of insight into what your upcoming projects are going to be please if yes. you're allowed so of course i have an action adventure film called river of blood which is also how j ford picture that should be coming out next year. Awesome. I have um, a horror with a little bit of sci-fi element called The Manor of Darkness, which is directed by Blake Ridder, produced mm -hmm. by a dear friend of mine, Lucas A. Ferrara and Louis James. And mm -hmm. then I'm just working on the production side of a couple of horrors that I'll also be starring in. So, yeah, just... Uh, moving on to the other side of the camera as well as in front of. So I'm hoping to film a good classic horror uh, called The Feed. It's a working title. It could change to Archie. Hoping to film that next month. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Well, listen, as a producer, then I, let me ask you this. Send a screen on my way when it's ready. I would love to review it for you. Horror absolutely. is absolutely my jam. I love horror. Oh, great. Yeah, um, yeah please. Yeah. Let, let Strike Media know and I will be happy to review that for you. I love that. You really do seem to be quite like the muse of horror at the moment, don't you? Between like the <laughs> previous projects and what you've got coming up. Like it's you two seem to be quite intrinsically linked. I know. I don't know how that happened, Nico. I really don't. <laughs> not wasn't it a plan. Happened. You're not like a horror nut. That's cool. Well, I cool. do like watching horrors. I've always loved watching horrors growing up. I didn't intend to, you know, become a screen queen in film. It just happened. <laughs> Maybe it's supposed I'd... to happen. <laughs> well, on that note, then, bonus question. What's your favourite horror movies? Scream. 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 Classic. Uh, classic. Yeah, it's just a classic franchise, you know, and I do like a whodunit when you're trying to guess who the killer is. Mm -hmm. 
And it's just nostalgic. I just remember sitting with my girlfriends, you know, all under the covers, closing the curses in the daytime, watching Scream 1 and just loving it and loving the adrenaline of being so frightened. I wouldn't even go Mm -hmm. to the bathroom my own after. (laughs) (laughs) And that's why horror is so powerful. Yeah, yeah. And that's why horror is so powerful. When it can literally stop you navigating your own house because you're that afraid, it's done its job. That's, That's me. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Sarah, where can people find you online if they want to follow you? I'm on Instagram and my handle is Sarah A. Marks. Sarah A. Marks following you right now. Um, Sarah, what I'll do also with this review, uh, sorry, with this interview, once it goes live later this week, um, I'll cut it down into a load of little reels and I'll, I'll are you happy for me to at you on Instagram so you, they get oh, sent your yes, way as well? Please. Yes, please. Yeah? Awesome. I'll be sure to do that then. This has been awesome. Guys, Escape comes at is the review is on the channel now. It will drop on streaming any moment now. I can't recommend it enough. Another hidden gem in line with Duchess and Bermondsey Tales. Go and watch it. Go and support independent cinema. That's what this channel's about, as you guys know. Sarah, thank you so much for your time. It's greatly appreciated. Oh, thank you so much for having me.